Question 29 gives us the equations for the x position and y position as a function of time for an object moving in an xy plane. Gives us the values for a 1.5 meters and omega 2.0 radians per second. This is, these are the equations that describe an object moving in a circle. Therefore, uh, this just works out to be where a is the radius of the circle and omega is the angular velocity. So if we're trying to figure out the acceleration, it's a centripetal acceleration. One of our equations for centripetal acceleration is it's equal to the radius times the angular velocity squared. Radius of 1.5 times the angular velocity of 2 squared gives us 6 meters per second squared. The correct answer is E. Mr. P? Uh, yes, Billy? I don't think I would recognize those equations as describing an object moving in a circle. Is there another way to do it? Sure, if you didn't recognize that those were the equations for moving in a circle, we could do it this way. We know the acceleration is equal to the second derivative of position with respect to time, so we can just figure out the acceleration in the x direction, for example, by taking the derivative twice with respect to time of a cosine omega t. Uh, taking the derivative once, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, we also need to multiply by omega. Uh, and then we take the derivative again, we multiply by omega, and the derivative of sine is cosine. So we get that the acceleration in the x direction is equal to negative a omega squared cosine of omega t. We can do the same thing in the y direction. And in the y direction, we end up with taking the derivative once, we get a omega cosine omega t, because the derivative of sine is cosine, and again, you need to multiply by the omega. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and again, divided, multiplying by an omega, we get negative a omega squared sine omega t for the acceleration in the y direction. Then to figure out the resultant acceleration, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we get the total acceleration is equal to the squared, is equal to the acceleration of the x direction squared plus the acceleration of the y direction squared. Taking the square root of both sides, we get that the net acceleration is equal to the square root of the acceleration, the quantity of acceleration in the x direction squared plus the acceleration in the y direction squared. So then we can just substitute in our values for the acceleration in the x direction and the acceleration in the y direction. And again, just substituting in our values, our numbers here, we get negative 1.5 times 2 squared times the cosine of 2t, that whole quantity squared, plus the negative of 1.5 times 2 squared times the sine of 2t, that whole quantity squared, again, taking the square root of the whole thing. Then you get uh, the acceleration equals negative 6 cosine of 2t squared plus negative 6 times the sine of 2t squared, the square root of that whole thing. Or when you multiply it out, you get 36 times the cosine squared of 2t plus 36 times the sine squared of 2t. And that works out to be, you could pull out the square root, uh, or you could take out the square root of 36, I guess, and we would call that 6 times the cosine squared of 2t plus the sine squared of 2t. And hopefully you can recognize that this cosine squared of 2t plus sine squared of 2t is just 1. The cosine squared of theta plus the sine squared of theta equals 1. The trig identity. And you get 6 meters per second squared. Personally, I think identifying that it was a circle was a little bit easier, but you could also do it this way.